Folks, if I could have your attention, I'd like to call the Planning Commission uh, meeting together for the 22nd of uh, 2019. I'm Kevin Jeffries, uh, Chairman. I'd like to welcome everybody here. Looks like we've got a, a nice crowd today, and, and uh, uh, I've got uh, three, at least three docketed items here that we've uh, to cover. So it's going to be a fairly busy day, probably a fairly long day. But uh, before we get started, uh, I've got one uh, announcement I need to make or introduction. Uh, we have a new county engineer. He's sitting, sitting over here. Jim's talking to him, Jim Silliman. And he'll be uh, on the docket. He'll be asking. That's who will be asking questions today about the, any of the engineering part of it. So, Jim, if you want to wave your hand or whatever, just uh, introduce. And th thanks for for being here with us this morning. So, with uh, with that, uh, if you would uh, join me for a pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance. Right. Thank you all for that. Um, with that, let's um, before we get uh, started with our approval of our minutes from last month, uh, I'd like to ask Ms. Nunn if she would swear in our, our staff. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? You do. do. Mm -hmm. All right. First thing, uh, commissioners, on our docket here would be approval of our December 18th uh, uh, Oldham County Planning Commission regular meeting minutes. If y'all had an opportunity to look at those, uh, uh, I'd like to get a motion on the floor to approve those. Mr. Hampton approves or moves. Second. We have a second. Okay. Mr. McWilliams seconds. Is there any additions or corrections that we need to make to the minutes from our December 18th meeting? Yes, Ms. Bonet. Very minor, but at the bottom of page nine in the last paragraph, it says the commission can approve or deny the three waiver request, and it should be a plural requests. Okay. And then the only other thing, I was not present for this meeting, but on page 8 in the middle of the page under the bullet points, it said purchased the site knowing and continuing on as a storage facility. Knowing what? As a person that wasn't there, it's not very clear what that sentence is trying to say. We can change that. Purchase the site expecting to continue on as a storage. How about Thank you. That? All right. Anything else, Ms. Benay? Any other additions or corrections? Any other additions or corrections? Move to approve as corrected, Mr. Chairman. Okay. We've already got a motion on the floor, so we'll... Uh, Take uh, mine back. <laughs> if there's no uh, uh, additions or corrections uh, else to add, uh, all those in favor of approving the minutes as corrected, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, no. Okay, the minutes from our December 18th meeting have been approved. All right, before we get started with our first docketed item, I just uh, would like to ask that if you have a cell phone with you, please either turn it on vibrate or turn it off so that it doesn't interfere with our speakers here in the, uh, in the courtroom. Uh, with these, speaker, these cameras are sound activated, so if a phone rings, it, it kind of messes up the, the camera. So would appreciate that. And we've got, uh, uh, we're working under uh, some time limits this, uh, on our hearing this morning. So I know we've got a lot of folks here. And, and uh, but what we try to do, the introduction, we, we allow 20 minutes of the, app for the application from the staff. Uh, 50 minutes for presentation by the applicant and representatives and others in support of the application. We then allow 50 minutes of testimony and questioning by those <coughs> opposing the application. And then the uh, questioning of the applicant and those opposing the application by the commission is uh, 30 minutes. And then we allow uh, a rebuttal evidence and cross-examination by the applicant of 10 minutes, rebuttal evidence and cross-examination by the opposition for 10 minutes, and then a final statement of five minutes of the opposition and a final statement of the applicant. And that's normally how we operate uh, as far as our hearing is concerned. So with that, uh, uh, Ms. Nunn, if you would, let's read our first docketed item, please. Okay, the first docket is PZ-19-001. Application has been filed by the Pulte Group for the approval of a preliminary open space subdivision plan for 80 lots on approximately 81.5 acres to be known as Goshen Place. The property is located at Goshen Lane and Plantation <coughs> Boulevard, Goshen. The zoning is R2 Residential District and AG1 Agricultural Residential District. 
All right, with that, Ms. Alvey, uh, you'll be introducing the docket for the staff this morning, so if you would. Yes. <clears throat> Good morning, Amy Alvey, Assistant Director with Oldham County Planning and Development Services. As Ms. Dun Nunn previously stated, this is a request um, for an 80-lot subdivision on approximately 78.83 acres to be known as Goshen Place. The property is zoned R2 residential and CO1 conservation and is approximately 78.83 acres and is located in the 2000 block of Goshen Lane. This is an aerial view of the property. You'll see it outlined in red. This is Goshen Lane here and um, Plantation Boulevard, which is the entrance to Taylor Creek Woods, I believe. This is the zoning. Um, you'll see that the darker green area here is the CO1 zoning and then the yellow area surrounding it is the R2 zoning. Um, there is no previous site history. This uh, property has not been before the Planning Commission. Uh, the app, again, the applicant is proposing an open space subdivision consisting of 80 lots on 78.83 acres off Goshen Lane. Open space subdivision regulations provide a design alternative to conventional subdivisions, which allow for smaller lot sizes but requires more open space. This is the proposed plan filed by the applicant. Um, open space requirements are at minimum 50% of the site, which would be 39.4 acres, or the amount of the area which each individual lot was reduced below the required minimum lot size, whichever is greater. Um, that total was 37.34 acres. Uh, the applicant is proposing 45 acres or 57% open space with the majority of it to remain in its current vegetation. So this is the area highlighted in green uh, showing the um, open space areas outside of the uh, intended lot use. Uh, the project will be served by sewers and will flow to the Ohio River Wastewater uh, uh, Regional Treatment Plant. Um, the gross density of the development cannot exceed 60% for a sewer development. The applicant is proposing 80 lots and the gross maximum density allowed is 110 lots. Buffering and landscaping provisions shall be provided when lots are immediately adjacent to an existing single family residential area. The applicant is proposing a 30 to 40 foot buffer along neighboring properties and states that existing vegetation will remain. And if during the construction process it is determined that preserving the existing ve vegetation is infeasible, additional native trees sh shall be proposed on the final tree preservation plan. So, um, and it's outlined on your plan as well. These are the green areas here are the vege vegetation areas that are to remain. Uh, a water line project, um, which is known as a grid tie with Louisville Water Company, will occur to increase water pressure to the required 750 um, gallons per minute per fire hydrant ordinance if the project is approved. The applicant is proposing three detention basins on the site to manage stormwater and will be required to submit a stormwater management plan to the county engineer's office for review and approval. Highlighted or circled in blue, those are the proposed three detention basins. Um, a traffic impact study was performed and found, um, and this is quoting from the traffic study, based upon the volume of traffic generated by the subdivision and the amount of traffic forecasted for the year 2021, there will be minimal impact to the existing highway network. No capacity deficiencies uh, were identified during the study. Therefore, no improvements to provide additional capacity to the adjacent roadway is required. The developer has agreed to widen Goshen Lane from the entrance of the subdivision to Little Huckleberry Creek as determined by the Oldham County Engineer. Um, staff's um, county engineer as well as our traffic engineer will address both of um, this topic in their presentations. Um, this is a west view. This is standing at the entrance of Goshen Lane, um, looking as if you were going into Jefferson County. This is the south view, which is across the street. This is the east view, looking at the intersection of Goshen Lane and Highway 42, so you'd be traveling towards LaGrange or Buckner. This is the north view from 42, looking into Goshen Lane. This is Goshen Lane at Cliffwood Drive. This is Goshen Lane at Valley Drive, and this is where um, I have an arrow um, there. 
showing this is where um, the curb and guttering of the road begins. So this is just a zoomed in version of that same um, information, same picture. <coughs> This is where the curbing ends, right at Little Huckleberry Creek. <coughs> this is still traveling north on Goshen Lane. This is the first turn um, on Goshen Lane. You'll see from the little vicinity map in the lower right corner. It's the first curve there. Just another view of the curve. This is the second turn, still traveling north on Goshen Lane. So this is looking north in that curve. This is looking south as if you were exiting towards 42 in that same curve. This is traveling further north to the site. This is the east adjoining property. This is Taylor Creek Woods. So this is Plantation Boulevard. Uh, this is standing at the entrance of Taylor Creek Woods, looking into the area um, of the site development. This is the south view from the proposed subdivision entrance. So this is south looking towards, um, you would ex be exiting towards 22, I'm sorry, 42. This is the north view. So this, if you follow this out and follow Goshen Lane, you would take you to Rose Island Road. This is the south adjoining property owner. Um, proposed binding elements. Um, staff has the three basic ones um, that we put in every um, application. There shall be no changes to the development plan without review by the Oldham County Planning Commission. The cumulative phasing plan shall limit the number of building permits issued to 35 per year beginning with the first record plat and the preliminary plan must comply with all established federal, state, and county ordinances and requirements at the time of approval. And that is all that I have. You can, yeah, Paula and Jim. Paula Wall, Neil Schaefer, 200 Whittington Parkway, 40222. Okay. As Amy stated, um, I reviewed the um, traffic study per the Oldham County subdivision regulations. Um, there was an original submittal on December 17th and comments were uh, made and the uh, developer uh, app, the traffic engineer made the revisions and resubmitted so uh, the final determination on this review is based on uh, comments that were addressed in the final final submittal of the traffic study um, the traffic impact study was submitted to Oldham County for review again and Kentucky transportation cabinet did not require a traffic study based on their guidelines um, just to summarize in general, overall the review of the study did not indicate that there are any substantive errors or discrepancies in the study as far as their methodology, data, or capacity analysis. It met engineering and transportation engineering standards. Um, I've also got a statement here summarizing the study conclusions. I won't read all that again. Amy just uh, made that statement. And it uh, basically, at the end, it talked about um, the developer agreeing to do Goshen Lane road improvements. Uh, Jim Silliman, the county engineer, will address um, those Goshen Lane improvements that are proposed. <laughs> Additionally, the, um, in the analysis, they pro provided an auxiliary lane analysis that the state has a basic computation for left turn warrant analysis. They did, they performed that for US 42 for a left into Goshen Lane. Um, preliminarily, it appears from a volume standpoint that it meets the warrants for a left turn requirement. Uh, I've requested some further input from the state, even though they didn't require the study of like their input on the um, need and 
potentially any other issues related to a left turn if just their opinion their opinion on that um, I've yet to <clears throat> have a response from the state on that so um, I'm not able to make a final recommendation today um, The, I also want to talk about a little bit about the uh, road classification of Goshen Lane. The 2003 major thoroughfare plan, uh, which has the classifications of the roads, in 2003 the plan, um, the last most recent adopted, showed Goshen Lane as a local road. However, um, there was an update to the functional class made in 2010 and it upgraded Goshen Lane from a local road to a collector road. Um, the update of those classifications did not break out the collector level classification from like a collector or a sub collector, which our regs um, allow. Um, it, it just it didn't it just didn't take it to that level. Um, but based on the federal highway criteria and assuming Goshen Lane improvements, I would recommend <clears throat> that this, it's the, it meets the sub-collector level for classification um, is recommended for Goshen Lane. That's also assuming that the road isn't widened as well. Um, for the proposed subdivision, weekday trips uh, were estimated to be 847 total trips per day. And that represents approximately a 64% of the future ADT and 78% increase from the existing ADT. Now that's on Goshen Lane, just in the section between the Valley Drive and the Plantation Drive, which is uh, where that curbing started at Valley Drive and all into Plantation where the developer is proposing their access. Um, while this proposed subdivision will increase existing traffic significantly, just based on those percentages, the future ADT is at the lower range for the road classification criteria. It's still very low, low volume um, road based on the classification. That's all I have. Okay, thank you. Uh, with that, Mr. Sullivan, do you uh, want to do your report? <coughs> Good morning. Good morning. Oldham County. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. Um, as Ms. Wall stated, uh, she discussed the, the clarification between the cl uh, collector and sub-collector uh, level classification of streets, and so we're uh, addressing this as a sub-collector uh, today. Um, with regards to the width, I would like to clarify in the, the statement in the uh, traffic impact study that indicates the uh, width was as determined by the engineer. Um, I think actually that that'd be more uh, clearly stated that that was as uh, as uh, entertained by the engineer. I think determined indicates that we pr we proposed that width. Uh, we didn't propose the 18 foot width, but we understand where they have uh, uh, Pulte has come from to propose that. Uh, with regard. Uh, to that in the Oldham County uh, subdivision regulations it does state that for the sub collector uh, level street that a 20 foot pavement width would be uh, recommended. Um, Pulte we understand they've recommended or they've proposed the 18 foot width um, and that that's with uh, roll curb concrete roll curb to match an existing uh, section on existing on Goshen Lane. Um, so, so we understand where why they have uh, not met the, two, the 20 foot recommendation. Um, when, uh, when looking at this uh, Goshen Lane with, with uh, compared to the rest of the road, um, the existing section that is curbed and 18 feet wide is a straight tangent section. Um, as Ms. Alvey pointed out, um, this section between plantation and a valley drive includes two almost 90 degree, uh, 90 degree turns. Uh, those turns have substandard uh, curve radii with respect to ash toe requirements. A couple of. Can you turn this on? Okay. The 
these, these two curves. Um, the existing radii at this curve is approximately 66 uh, feet, and this radii is approximately 75. Uh, the AASHTO standards for a curve that's normal, normal crown at 25 miles an hour is 198 feet. Uh, to construct a curve that was center line of 198 feet. Uh, you can see this, th this dark line here is the uh, currently assumed right of way as presented by Pulte. This line would be the center line of a 190 foot, again, Ashto recommended curve. Now, if you were to uh, super elevate the curve or bank it uh, at 8%, you can reduce that required radius to 134 feet, but even then that center line is getting very close to that right of way that's shown there and there. So uh, even going down to that uh, super elevated curve radius uh, could be complicated uh, for construction. So uh, with, with that considered, um, the, the engineering department uh, recommends there be a binding element that with consideration of the improvements to Goshen Lane between Valley Drive and the new entrance, uh, that it not only be widened to the 18 feet with roll curb, but those two 90-degree uh, curves be addressed properly uh, to provide truck turning movements with minimal, minimal encroachment and uh, AASHTO standard curve radii. Um, Ms. Wall also mentioned the traffic impact study and review by uh, KYTC with regard to the left turn movement at uh, Goshen, uh, I'm sorry, at uh, US 42. Uh, we discussed this and feel that until we have uh, further input from KYTC, we can't make a recommendation with regard to the left turn lane. Okay. Because it is a state controlled highway. Um, other other uh, issues of concern or note from the engineering, engineering department would, of course, be uh, with respect to drainage. See, on this map, let's see. Well, let, me, let me look at these individually. There are three approximate watersheds that we've observed. Two, uh, two watersheds, the areas don't change significantly. However, we still need, uh, with construction plan submittals, uh, sufficient uh, calculations and evidence that the post-development discharge doesn't exceed the pre-development and uh, erosion control uh, measures for construction will be implemented uh, following county uh, recommendations and regulations. Uh, there is a more concern with this watershed where the red line indicates the original current watershed that flows into this small area. Um, the yellow line indicates based on some preliminary storm sewer uh, layout that we were provided, the proposed uh, watershed. So considering the additional uh, increase in that watershed area. Again, we need uh, construction plans, calculations, and documentation uh, that the post-development discharge doesn't exceed uh, the pre-development or current discharge, especially considering if you, you look that this will discharge through an adjacent property, not part of the subdivision. So that's, that's a concern that will need to be addressed during uh, construction plan and erosion control plan submittal. Those are all the notes I had from our review. If you have any questions. We will. Uh, we'll have an opportunity here in just a few minutes. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to call up uh, Mr. Uh, Michael Williams from the Oldham County School Board to uh, provide some numbers. <coughs> Name and address for the record, if you would. Michael Williams, Oldham County Board of Education, 6165 West Highway 146, Crestwood, Kentucky. Um, you all have your capacity ordinance form with you or presented to you when we run the base numbers you see that 
the current available percentage for the campus is 91.98% of capacity. Uh, when you add in the additional subdivisions that have already been approved, that pushes that to 94.12% of capacity. Based on the multiplier, that would still grant them the 35 um, building permits per year based on that calculation between the approved um, policies of the school board and the planning commission. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right, with that, uh, commissioners, uh, do you have any questions for staff as, that has been presented at this point? Yes, sir. Mr. Douglas, sorry. Go ahead, sir. Oh, thank you. Sorry. Uh, my first question would be, I guess, to Ms. Alvey. <clears throat> uh, did the staff uh, receive any um, calculations from the applicant about the difference between the open space regulation density compared to just a, a regular subdivision regulation density? No. No? I, Mr. Douglas, I think that would probably be a question that we could, could ask. Well, I'm, they, I'm they, making sure that right. yeah. they didn't no, provide we, it. They did not provide us calculations for what could be built in a conventional subdivision versus an open space. They did not provide those calculations to us. Okay. okay. Um, in regards to open space regulations, um, which is, I guess, our regulations 5.12, okay. would you consider this to be a cluster section or an individual section? Would the, is the proposed subdivision, mm -hmm. it's, it can be either built as cluster section or as a conventional. And which one would, would this be? I would consider this design more of a conventional based off the layout of the lots. Okay. And, and the roadways. And the roadways, correct. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's all I have of you. Okay, thanks. Horton. I, I wasn't done. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Just, <laughs> sorry about that. Just okay. with me. Okay. She <laughs> might have to answer the next one. But, all right. Uh, my next question would be to the county engineer. Okay, Mr. Solomon. Yes, sir. Uh, you might not be familiar with this, and maybe Amy will have to share it with you, but under the open space regulation, uh, I think uh, Ms. Juan Paula also mentioned it, the ADTs for the subdivision, mm -hmm. was the ADTs 800 and something? Do you recall? I, I don't recall. Sorry. That's okay. I didn't see her, so I just didn't know she came okay. back in. Sorry, I stepped out. The question was ADT was on the ADTs, Ocean? Uh, no, just for the subdivision itself. I know the applicant. It was 847 and daily, you, or 70. I'm getting my numbers mixed around. Um, uh, 847. That's based on IT trip generation for daily, weekday daily okay. generation, yeah. And I guess my next question will be to Mr. Urban, if he can answer it. Um, does our section 5.3 state there are, that on open space regulations that the ADTs are supposed to be at 250? Well, uh, let me get to that page so I can quote the whole okay. thing not from my head. 5.3, you're talking about the um, per section and um, let's see. Uh, our, de our determination was that there, you can't put a period in the middle of a sentence that it says or conventional subdivision. And so we don't see that the 250 trips um, uh, applies necessarily to uh, each cluster. And like Ms. Alvey said, we looked at this as a conventional subdivision layout when it came to those trips. Thank you. Otherwise, quite honestly, you wouldn't be able to do any cluster right. development. It would be a disincentive. Right. But when I read the whole thing, when you read the whole sentence, it, it, it lends itself to being interpreted as a conventional subdivision for that uh, purpose of the trips. Okay. Anything else, Mr. Douglas? Not okay, Mr. Horton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
<coughs> Ms. Alvey. <coughs> Um, just hearing um, the engineer say that, that uh, we've not received, uh, that there was needed calculation and documentation of concern for a drainage problem. I know this has gone through the TRC Technical Review Committee. Um, have they met uh, all the requirements and the satisfactory or satisfactory mitigation for the application at this time from all the agents and agencies and so forth? Well, they'll have to have all of their agency letters if the project would be approved. They have to have their agency letters at the time that they would submit for a record plat. Um, so they have to work individually at this point with each individual agency to um, uh, rectify any issues. One of the issues that was raised as an example was um, water pressure concerns and fire protection concerns, whether there was adequate water pressure for hydrants. Um, and the, I put that in my presentation, but the applicant will probably also address it, that they have worked with Louisville Water Company to do a tie-in um, to provide the adequate um, gallons per minute um, as required by the fire hydrant ordinance. Um, I can't say what conversations and everything else that they've worked out with the other agencies regarding their, their drainage issues that you would probably have to ask Mr. Solomon that information. Did, uh, didn't the um, requirements, first of all, in TRC, usually, if my memory's right, they would receive records or, re or reply or something from each of these agency uh, in TRC or shortly thereafter before it comes here? Is that, I mean, that's the way correct. it used to be, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Uh, they, uh, they still get comments from the agencies and then anything that needs to be addressed reflected on the, pl on the plan design. They make those modifications if an easement wasn't listed or the detention basin was too close or something of that nature they would make those modifications on the plans but a lot of the details get worked out once they go to construction plan review okay. or so it's they, further or they may actually present information today correct okay so it's further it's the same process same information but further down the line yes, before any approvals are given yes sir okay thank you mm -hmm. thank you mr chairman uh, mr mcwilliams Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Amy, I don't think I have. Yes, I do. Okay. Um, there was something in our packet from the fire department uh, relative to concerns getting into the subdivision with certain types of equipment. Recall that? <coughs> from the <coughs> comments that were made at the TRC? Uh, at the TRC, the... Yeah. Um, um, Hewitt Brown, who is the fire chief for North Oldham, said that they have had um, issues in the past of getting um, fire apparatuses down Goshen Lane in the event that there's an accident or something of that nature. They have to go around um, because of the roadway. But so if there's an accident on Goshen Lane, they would have to go around the accident. They wouldn't be able to access. If there was an accident, they can't. There's not adequate room to go around anywhere if there was a fire or something of that you know that they need so they to have get to through. wait until that would be cleared i'm assuming I, I can't speak for the fire department but i would assume so where they found an alternate route to get to the location that they needed to go to so uh would it be a fair assumption to say that that would uh, increase the time that it took from the time the fire department would leave until it would get to a fire Mr. Williams, let me, let me suggest that we maybe ask the applicant of that, and he can probably, they might have more detailed uh, information about the, about that. More than happy to. Okay. All right. And just let me just comment, just to understand, after the TRC, this go, the process goes on. I mean, they're allowed to go investigate, and, and so. Who's I, they, sir? The applicant. Yeah. So whether it's water pressure, fire department, sewers, uh, they, they can continue to go and investigate and get additional information to answer the questions at the TRC level. So I think it'd be best to direct some of those technical questions to the applicant. Correct. Well, Amy is well versed in this case. You're, <laughs> well, you, you're, you're, you're asking when her I'm for, not sure, I'll call on Amy. <laughs> yeah, well, you're asking her for testimony as well when you say yeah, you make the assumptions, and, and we shouldn't do that, correct? Sorry, Amy. That's okay. Any, anything else, Mr. McQuaid? Yes, sir. Okay. I'd like for uh, Ms. Wall to come up. Hey, Paula. Hey. Uh, I'm, I'm confused. Surprise, surprise. But I don't really understand. Would you go over again? You made the statement that the future ADT um, 
at Goshen and 42 would be mm. in the lower range? No. What I'm talking about here in bullet point six is the ADT um, on Goshen between Valley Drive and Plantation Drive. Okay, so what's the reason that it's in the lower range? Is it a redesignation well, of the type of road or what? No, that um, the Federal Highway Department has a, a criteria for that they've put out for road classification for jurisdictions to use in defining road classifications. There's several different variables. A lot of them have to do with how the road functions as far as is it is it serving um, a regional use or more of a local use? Is it serving neighborhoods? Is it is it uh, through traffic? Is it is it urban or rural, major or minor? One of the, and one of the criteria is a range of um, traffic volumes is one of the criteria that you can use in determining what the classification should be. Their range for a minor collector, minor or sub collector, which is Goshen Lane, mm -hmm, which is what I've said seems to be the appropriate classification is around 1000 to 6000 ADT is is just a bop is a is that a bigger range. Yes. Yes. You think about um, when you when you go to areas um, like Jefferson in Jefferson County, all the county roads like the county maintained county function through what they call their through road system a lot of those are collector levels even if they're rural um it's because they serve you know they're they're a certain length they serve kind of a large area and some of those adts can be lower some of those can even be higher than the range again the adt traffic volume is just one of the criteria you use it's not it's not a hard and fast you know decision because it is does, site uh, specific does ADT or the federal government uh pay any attention to 90 degree turns or anything like that or sure they, sure so that's all factored into what sure the decision road, width, <coughs> road width um those those are other speed Speed. Speed on the road. Like speed speed limit. limit. Yeah, things like that are also. What is the speed limit on Goshen? 25. So it's. Totally from 42 I believe to so. the river. I believe so. And that, again, is a minimal speed limit. That's basically all our lo you know, local roads are 25 mile an hour. Typically, a collector level would be higher than 25. Um, I don't know the history on why it's set at 25. I'm guessing it's because the width and the curves. Um, it was designated that I don't I don't know that for sure but again it was previously designated as a local road as I said it got it got updated in 2010 to the functional class appreciate it uh, mr. chairman one more mr. Williams <clears throat> mr. Michael Williams yes sir how you doing how are you Good. Uh, I have a question about Rex um, would that be, I don't know that that would be Rex, Rex. I don't know that that would be related is to school buses. Related to school. You, you were talking about related to the buses or, uh -huh. okay. I thought you meant just Rex in general, but okay, go ahead. Ask your question. Well, if, you, if you know anything about those, that'd be great. But I'm talking about school buses in general. Yes, sir. Have we had any, what issues have we had with school transportation in Goshen Lane, if any? None to my knowledge, but I would have to check with our transportation department. They deal with that far more than I do. None to your knowledge, but check with and I can check with transportation to see if we have any issues. Right. You're, you're asking testimony from somebody that's pupil pro personnel director, not transportation director. Uh, yes, sir. I know he doesn't know. Okay. Well, just for clarity for the people in the audience as well. <laughs> um, okay. None to your knowledge. Um, is there any way is there any way we could get that information from the transportation department mr chairman well we, we can ask i mean we, you know we've got the hearings going on so yes, you know i don't know whether he could, could he find out for us would we let him find out and tell us make that call or you know talk to the appropriate hey. folks or whatever but that's it okay anything else sir no sir okay uh if it's okay mr douglas you got a couple of questions about four staff or can we 
Okay. All right. Let's uh, let's try, and then we'll try to get into the applicant's presentation. So, okay, go ahead. Uh, my question will be to our county engineer, and who's also our MS4 coordinator, also for the county. <clears throat> I, I heard your comment and uh, concerns that so far you have not received a stormwater quality management plan or erosion plan yet. Correct. So a lot of the questions, or a couple of questions I'm going to ask, you probably can't answer, and we'll ask those to the applicant. Um, my first question is that I'm sure you've looked at the site, preliminary site plan, mm -hmm. plat. There's identified several karst locations on the plan, and there's several sensitive areas where there's blue line streams on the plan, and there's also uh, some significant slopes on the plan. Based on your experience uh, and knowledge, has the applicant provided a report to staff regarding those issues, environmental sensitive areas? To my knowledge, no. And the way I, under, the way I understand currently is that that would uh, applicably come with their construction documents, which is when we would do a thorough review of their uh, drainage analysis and how they're addressing all these features you're uh, questioning. Um, so again, this, this was made- Obviously, I don't want to interrupt you, but obviously sure. this, our regulations under section 5.9 states that the applicant is supposed to provide this report at the time of the application. Well, let me, let me clarify that because they're supposed to provide an environmental, a statement about the environmental conditions and they did do that in their application. The report is something that it says clearly in the regulations the commission can request during a hearing. So at this level of preliminary plan uh, re review, it wasn't required, but you can request it if you need to make, help make a decision. Correct. That's what I was just trying to get at, right. just to make sure that yes. no one had asked beforehand. That's correct. Uh, do you see any risk involved with the karst? Do you know much about can I'm you? not an expert in karst okay. uh, okay. features, so I, I shouldn't make that statement here. That sounds great. Uh, thank you. I have nothing else. Okay. All right, commissioners, if it's, if it's okay, let's take about a five, six minute recess here and before we start into the applicant's presentation. And uh, if you would, uh, folks, you know, don't talk to the commissioners when we're when on recess and we'll try to get back here in about uh, six minutes. <laughs>